A warm welcome to all our viewers to our series, Natural Medicine. I was recently able to talk to a lady, to a doctor, about hormones in connection with problems in women who simply suffer from headaches throughout their cycle. They get migraines. We've seen that the subject of hormones goes much deeper than we all think, and that's why I want to do a show today where we explicitly talk about these hormones, which hormones are healthy and which ones make us seriously ill. And that's exactly what we want to prevent with this important educational program. Stay tuned, we'll start right away. Yeah, dear Alexandra Kothaus, welcome to the studio. You're a doctor and work together with Professor Dr. Thomas Rau in the Sonnenberg Clinic. And I know it's a competence center, a biological house. He said it, it is bio and logical. A great name and I really want to drive into this hormone topic with you. When you said to me in the last show, that these hormones, which we take in from outside, change our body very strongly and also promote tumours, specifically breast cancer, prostate cancer, two types of cancer that are increasing, are actually caused by many external hormonal imbalances. And I'd like to know, what do we need to know so that we can do without it? Big topic, I know. Exactly. This cannot be answered in one sentence. We have time. It's known from Asian women before they adopted the Western diet that breast cancer was very, very, very rare. Asian women tended to start menstruating later than Western women and stop bleeding earlier. This is an indication, is, is not yet necessarily a causal connection, so a proven connection, but an indication that hormones play a significant role. The more the Asians adopt our Western way of life, the more they get our diseases, in terms of diabetes, high blood pressure and cancer. Breast cancer, prostate cancer, they're becoming more and more common. With breast cancer, if you now look at histological examination, then there are hormone-dependent and hormone-independent tumours from the point of view of academic medicine. For us, from our point of view, more or less all tumours are actually hormone-dependent. What is perhaps not so well known is that all cells possess oestrogen receptors. So oestrogen is a typical female hormone. Of course, it has various other subgroups, while testosterone, as we all know, is the male hormone. Of course, both sexes have both in them. The oestrogen makes the cell divide, so it divides faster. We need that for all cells, and that's why every cell has an oestrogen receptor. There is an antagonist that is progesterone, which stops this process of cell division. If I now have an inflammation, then more cell division takes place. The tissue is supposed to be renewed. And when everything is fine again, the progesterone comes and stops this process. So there we are now outside of this, what we typically always do with the organs in a gender-dependent way, but that is a process that can take place in all cells. Mm -hmm. Now we have the problem. Not only do we have more of our own oestrogens in our bodies, we also have foreign oestrogens in our bodies, so we call them xenoestrogens. Xeno is the Greek prefix for foreign, for non-human. So non-human female hormones, and they're causing this cell division stimulus, growth stimulus. With the specific oestrogen, another receptor, that's good. We women need that during pregnancy so that the baby can grow. But outside of pregnancy, the wrong oestrogen at the other receptor makes growth, also makes cells multiply, promotes tumours. In particular, of course, the sex hormone-dependent organs are affected, breast, uterus, ovaries, prostate, but also breasts in men. 
So that means even men who are getting more and more breasts uh, actually have a, an excess of oestrogen and probably supplied from the outside. Yes. Exactly. I see more and more young men under the age of 30 with breasts growing. There are several reasons for this, if now not only the chest has grown, but also the tummy has grown, then I also have another hormone producer in this belly fat. Oestrogen is also produced there. So like a snowball, just getting bigger and bigger. So like an avalanche. Exactly. You supply yourself. Yes, you can put it that way if you wish. If you are now, let me say, a bit more voluptuously built, that doesn't have to be anything bad or pathological in itself. That's where the sex can play a role now. With women, I have the typical feminine figure, wide hips, narrow waist, that would be normal. But if I have what more and more people have, I'm slim up to the hips, and then comes a belly, then it's a bad combination. Then I have my own producer, or I have the pill that many women take, hormone treatment during menopause. And I have what's in the water if I don't filter it, if the sewage treatment plant isn't good enough, what I get from leftover pills, the hormone treatment from other people via the water. By the way, no treatment plant removes that. No sewage treatment plant has claimed that yet, that they would take the pill out of the water. In other words, we all get oestrogen through the tap. That can be. So, of course, it also depends on the region where you live. Sometimes sewage treatment plants provide information about this. Many people say water is the most studied food. Considering that we have 40,000 toxins in the environment and the water is mostly tested for 20, maybe even more, or 100 things, I can't agree with that. <laughs> exactly, I'm totally with you. But when I hear that when you get too much oestrogen, which actually increases this cell division process, would you have to take progesterone from the outside to stop the process? Some do it. Some doctors do it. Biological doctors do it too. So that you say, well, fine, I can take bioidentical progesterone, so one that doesn't come from my body but is identical to it what the hormones that the classic gynecologist prescribes are usually not. They are similar, but not identical. For me, that is always the second step. For me, the first step would be if I really go back and say, I want to treat a cause, then I have to get out the wrong ones first. Of course, it can happen that someone has such severe complaints, they are, of course, treated better if they get something. But I see it as more of a temporary thing, because the first thing for me is that I would have to get the wrong oestrogen out. Of course, I have other sources of these oestrogens. It is not necessarily your own belly fat and that's not necessarily drinking water either. If it is present in plastic too, in food packaging, in drinking bottles of water and other drinks, coating of frying pans. Well, I know about the PET bottle, but also food. So if the food's wrapped in plastic, then this resonance is immediately, I put a piece of meat on the plastic, then it's there. Yes, I know. I mean, what else do you want to buy in a big shopping centre? Everything is wrapped in plastic. It's good to eat as much fruit and vegetables as possible, whether there's a little something in there or not, because it's very clear that this helps to keep my, me healthy or to restore my health. I recently gave a presentation on this for cancer, for the most cancer-causing substances, just as an example, one of them is actifloxin. If I combine this with the wrong food, I can immediate, I can increase the toxicity immensely. If I combine it with the right foods, like for example chlorophyll, then I lower the toxicity again. Where do I find aflatoxin? Aflatoxin is a mold toxin, and there was an examination. It's been a while since I read that, so it was, I think in the Philippines, it was then found that peanuts are particularly contaminated with aflatoxins. Also, other things that come from tropical areas can contain this, and that it has caused liver cancer in children. So aflatoxin is considered very liver damaging. 
But then they took a closer look and found that only a certain group of children had liver cancer. But not all children who have eaten this contaminated peanut butter. It was interesting now that only the children of rich parents got liver cancer because they had enough money to buy dairy products. And the poor children who had the classic traditional diet, which in tropical areas does not consist of dairy products, they didn't get it. So back to hormones, plastic. So we should see that we do without plastic as much as possible. It not only makes sense from an ecological point of view. But while I'm on the subject of plastic, allow me to ask one more question. When I buy a salad, say a cucumber, really wrapped up from head to toe like a condom, how much life can there still be in these cucumbers? If, if, I, if I wrapped a person like that, they would die after a short time. Yes, that's true. There's still life in there, so if it's an organic cucumber, I would probably rather buy the cucumber than leave it there. So I still have to make sure that I don't become so fanatical that I focus so much on it and leave healthy food. But that I always keep a variation. I'll let you cough. <laughs> you can cough in our studio. <laughs> Okay, so don't become more Catholic than the Pope. Nevertheless, I, I ask myself the question, what happened to the biophotons, to the living things inside this cucumber? There's still something inside, but it's better to buy plastic-free, if that's available at all. The biophotons are still inside if the skin is intact. Fruit and vegetables contain the so-called phytochemicals which are a very complex type of substance. These are the substances that make up the immune system of the plant, which the plant, it is said, does not actually need or hardly needs at all, but which are extremely important for keeping us healthy or restoring our health. Now, if I have a plant covered in plastic or one that has been sprayed with pesticides, then these phytochemicals are used to neutralize the toxin. This is how the plant protects itself. Uh, but before I eat it, do I actually have to peel the skin and take it away? At least wash it well, or wash the lettuce well. Here we come to the next problem. The things that are important to us are often in the skin. Because the skin also keeps predators away. Where a few things might not be so good for us, but many things are also good for us. There's also more zinc in the potato peel than in the potato itself, for example. The other thing is that foods that have been sprayed will also be sprayed during growth. So it's also in the food. It doesn't just sit on top of the skin. So even if I wash it well, if I wash it thoroughly, I still have it there. And it goes one step further. I then have it in the food. The food has fewer plant substances readily available. For me, that protect me from cancer, for example, or from colds. But these pesticides also continue to have an effect in our intestines and impair our good intestinal flora. From one to the next. Now, I did this as a bracket, but let's go back to this estrogen again. If I see it that way and hear from you, that it favours the division of cells, one can say that this is a major reason for the explosive increase in prostate cancer and breast cancer. Yes, but it's more complex. So it's not just estrogens now, but in order for cancer to actually develop, several factors have to come together. But it is something that works very unfavorably on that. But through sensitive knowledge, to know where exactly I can find it, we could reduce it massively. Yes. So, well, now you said plastic, okay. I guess we probably have a, a lot in the meat today, right? 
It really, really, really depends on how the animal grew up. If I really have an animal that was kept and fed in a species-appropriate manner, I'm always of the opinion that an animal also needs some. There is also organic milk and the cows are always in the barn. I always think that an animal is not made for that. And since I now know what good things the sun can do, what the infrared spectrum can do to our bodies, that it activates the mitochondria in us, influences blood flow, the function of the immune system, why shouldn't it be the case with animals? So an animal that had access to open space, which had species-appropriate food, and which, if possible, as far as one can use the word in the context, was also slaughtered humanely or animal-friendly. That just affects it. Now, I found someone in Appenzell who makes caviar cattle with beer, and they're petted, cared for, nurtured. They walk by the butcher once a day and wave. They're taking a walk. So beautiful and so cute. And I just think it's great when a farmer can treat the animals like that. But if I eat factory farmed meat... No question, it's best to avoid it. That's the way it is. I'm not at, at all sure whether it's still in the WHO recommendations because there's been so much protest against it. But also the WHO itself, so the World Health Organization, revealed that meat is carcinogenic. Red meat. Also because of oestrogens. I can't say in detail whether it's because of the oestrogens, but of course I have them. If the animal has been fed concentrated food, I have these growth hormones, growth accelerators in it. So another point. In our last program, you mentioned cosmetics. Cosmetics work with oestrogens. Where is the sense in that? So cosmetics, that's exactly where I said an average woman takes in around 150 toxins per day through cosmetics alone. I keep having patients who say, I've been eating organic for 20 years and I'm avoiding plastic. Where did I get that from? So the sources are really complex and things are stored in the body for many years, sometimes decades, if I don't actively get them out. It's not always that oestrogen is added to the shower gel. If I don't have organic shower gel with plant extracts and the plants in it aren't organic, this takes me back to the subject of pesticides, glyphosate. Everyone should know by now, glyphosate is also a so-called xenoestrogen. Plus, I often have heavy metals in these sprays as well. Mercury is also what is known as a hormone disruptor, something that can also have an oestrogen-like effect and which can also mess up our system, hormone system. And I can have that too. In cosmetics, aluminium is something that's very commonly found in cosmetics. So how does that affect the hormones? And there is a strong suspicion that it promotes breast cancer. And one does not talk to the other there? <laughs> not that much, no, unfortunately not. Uh, now, there are more and more natural cosmetics, or they're called natural cosmetics. Is there really nature in there, or do you have to question that too? Yes, you have to question that too. There are a lot of cosmetics that really contain very high quality herbs, where the herbs are organic, for example, but the basis, the washing active substance, is not organic. There are very expensive ointments, day creams, shower gels in the perfumery or in the pharmacy, for sometimes sensitive skin, where I always look at the small print and see Washing active substance is a cheap crude oil or petroleum product which makes the skin more open again, more permeable to harmful substances. It's a shame actually, and sometimes really the cheapest organic shampoo or shower gel is better than an expensive remedy that actually contains high quality herbs. You mentioned the word glyphosate earlier. I'd like to mention one more number. The Swiss Drinking Water Ordinance states that 0.1 micrograms per litre is permitted in drinking water. 
The WHO says more than 0.5 is carcinogenic. And when we tested urine for glyphosate a little while back, we got values between 9 and 50. A German beer we measured, several German beers with glyphosate levels of 15. Only the drinking water ordinance cannot be compared with it, and so on. It's simple. This glyphosate level is dramatic. And also in our drinking water, it's, it's just there. And that is promoting estrogen. France has banned glyphosate since 2020, across France. We Swiss and the Germans say it will remain healthy until 2025. After that, it will probably be banned. Oh, I don't understand that. Neither do I. But we know about it. Neither do I. I'm finding it really difficult to comp comprehend. I always think, even if I didn't think as biologically as I'm used to now, I actually started thinking very early on. I questioned things that were not natural. Do you really have to have all these sprays to feed the world's population? There's enough examples that say, no, you don't have to have that. It's not necessary for this. One does not necessarily have to have a harvest loss. You could do it differently. Sometimes you can't even pin down an absolute value as to whether it's carcinogenic or not. The problem now is we have a whole potpourri of different toxins and we can't ex say exactly how these toxins interact within us. Before we get into the subject of weight blocking, I have a little sarcastic anecdote in between. Of course, I put this in brackets too, but you know, now in the last two years, the government has taken responsibility for our health. Then I simply ask myself, on the one hand, glyphosate's still there. On the other hand, we have all the dairy products, where there, were, there are so many studies. We have all the wheat products, which is clearly documented in studies. We actually know what a healthy diet is and which diet makes us ill, but the government does not take responsibility for this issue towards us, but waits for a new rule, and now there's a lot of hype about it. Everything's okay, everything's fine, but consequently we should also make sure that people don't die from the wrong diet. What causes most of the deaths worldwide? Well, no, most of the people who have no food. Even worse, starvation. We, we all do nothing. So for me, when I compare it that way, and now I close the brackets, that is hypocrisy. We have such dramatic situations in the world, and we, we could change them, but we don't. Well, hormone problems in connection with figure problems, with weight loss problems, diet problems, they also exist. Yes, quite typical. There are many women who say, I've tried to lose weight. Men usually come up with the problem less often. I've tried everything and have a healthy diet. And somehow it doesn't work. Part of it is hormonal, yeah, part of it is. When I ask them again, although they think they already live healthy and pay a lot of attention to everything and also eat organic or whole foods, which is already great progress, if I make a few modifications in their diet, then usually the weight melts away. And then there are still some where it's incredibly difficult to further lose weight. And then experience shows when you help them, get these xenoestrogens out of the body, then when you detoxify them, when you detoxify the liver, which plays a big role for many metabolic processes, when you treat it nicely, get it going, then the weight loss continues. The liver forms a preliminary stage for the sex hormones and also breaks them down again on the other hand. We have cholesterol as the basic structure, as a precursor for sex hormones, as a precursor for cortisol, for bile acids, vitamin D, so with a variety of functions. And there, at this point, various processes in the body come together, both build up and break down metabolism, and all the unhealthy stuff, the body has to somehow make the xenoestrogens bile permeable again so that I can then pass it through the liver via the bile, can get the whole thing out again. 
That means people who really have problems with losing weight. They want to lose weight, it's not possible they do everything right. It would be a good advice to really give yourself a hormone status or to see where I have external hormones and how does my hormone status look in general. Yes and no. Sometimes I just start with a screen. So a good anamnesis that I listen to the patient carefully. What have they already tried? How are they eating right now? That I check the liver values in the laboratory. I often do a screening value as a first step. The SHBG value, sex hormone binding globulin. I didn't get it. What was that one? This is a protein that is made by the liver and responds to the amount of a certain group of oestrogens in the blood. And if the value is relatively high, so it's not proof, it's a sign because I have a lot of oestrogen in my blood, then I usually already know these are probably not all their own. That's where xenoestrogens play a role. If I then give substances to get the xenoestrogens out, then I also see how this value goes down again. So there's a serious drop where you can no longer say it's cycle fluctuations or something. And then when this oestrogen goes down, I also have a reduction in cell divisions. This means that then have a much better opportunity to burn the existing cell or to lose weight as a result. Yes, there are now two things with cell division. I, of course, reduce cell division or I stop pouring fuel on the fire for chronic inflammation or cancer. But also, what does oestrogen do? That is also a pregnancy hormone. The child should be nourished. I take in food much better or maybe even store it or, you know, it causes water retention in the legs. And if I pull that out again, then I'll get rid of the excess stuff again and the whole metabolism will run better. Don't despair. Ask a biological doctor. Seems to me to be this, the correct aspect. Because these different empirical medicines, which you simply have in biological medicine, show causal relationships that you would otherwise not believe. But it's simply important that we make people aware through television that there are simply foods containing oestrogen or water and so on additives that are far from promoting our health but represent a, a great risk. Yes, exactly. Good. Weight loss is one thing, but I always gravitate towards the prostate and breast cancer problems, where simply statistically there are gigantic numbers. I think a 50-year-old man has a 50% chance of suffering and a 60-year-old man is at 60%. And for women, it's the same with breast cancer in terms of numbers. I don't have the current numbers in my head right now, but the risk of breast cancer has increased enormously in the last 20 years. So in the mid-1990s, we had significantly less breast cancer than today. And women are getting younger. And you don't ask why. There are more and more solutions to operate or to fight a tumour with radiation and chemotherapy. But to question why the body produces that, that doesn't happen, does it? Well, yes and no. During our studies, we had histolo histology classes. Histology is the study of tissues. That means we had to look at cells under the microscope, recognize which tissue it is, and then we have just learned in detail what the tissue structure is like, what the liver looks like in its small areas. And then I bought a big book, a really big book. And then I was so scared of the professor, or not just me, we all studied thoroughly, and in this big book, that was before 2000, there was already a lot in it that oestrogens play a role for a lot of diseases, for a lot of tumours, tissue changes. Somehow it didn't come from this study knowledge into clinical practice. This is like afterwards, the knowledge will just get buried. It's somehow not transported into everyday life or anything. Because I think many people don't see that the danger 
is real and think it really doesn't happen that often. So I also noticed in myself that it really took me, let's say, about three years until I really recognised how big the extent is and what role that plays and how important it is to address that. I also have a classic naturopathic training, but then you just give sometimes, then this herb for headaches and that herbs for stomach pains. Until it became clear to me that the bottom line is that I'm no different than academic medicine, only that I use plants instead of chemicals to treat symptoms, not causes. Thank you very much. That was also an interesting explanation. I wish you all the best and thanks for all the contribution. And you too, dear viewers. I hope we were able to make you aware of this external flood of hormones which keeps raining down on us through nutrition, through water, and God knows where else from. That we just pay a little more attention to drinking clean water that is hormone free, eating meat where you really know where it came from and how it was made. We've heard that plastic is a very big problem. Try to avoid it as much as possible. And just maybe listen to this show again one or the other time. And if you have problems or think you have problems, then you also know where to find biological medicine. There are also solutions that address the cause. In this sense, all the best. See you next time.